know, I, some sort of snowflake uh, thing that's made out of tent material. And upshift. Okay. Well, it's no Ferrari, but, you know, it, it's cool that it has them. What's up, everybody? My name is Elliot, and welcome to a segment I'm going to be calling Other People's Cars. The main idea of the segment is that I'm going to be taking a quick look at cars that are not mine and showing you what they're like when real people use them like the normal cars that they are. I'm going to be looking at cars that are cool, uncool, dirty, clean, and giving you a fair assessment of the vehicle and the contents within each vehicle that make the car what it is. Think of it like that old MTV show, Room Raiders, except I don't want to date any of the contestants and nobody really wins anything. Today we're going to be taking a look at a 2015 Mazda 3. This is the third generation of Mazda's popular compact sedan. This particular car is powered by a 184 horsepower, 2.5 liter inline four cylinder. It's not what anybody would call fast, but it can get out of its own way and it probably won't get you in any trouble. If you were cross shopping one of these cars, you would probably compare it to a Honda Civic, Ford Focus, Volkswagen Golf, some weird people might even compare it to a Subaru Impreza, but that's a whole different group of people right there. But that's enough of an overview of the car. You've seen these, they've been out for a few years. Let's take a look in and around the car and maybe even take it out for a quick drive, provided it's not absolutely disgusting in there. Hopping inside the Mazda 3, you're greeted with a handsome, well-appointed interior. This is an upper trim level car, so it comes with a sunroof, heated seats, automatic climate control, my favorite, and automatic wipers, which are really cool, not just because everybody needs wipers when it rains, but it helps you not look like a dork at the stoplights with your windshield wipers going out of control. As far as personal items in this car, so far all I've seen is this iPhone lightning cable and an ice scraper, even though it's 95 degrees out. I'm assuming it's left over from the winter time, but I guess it's better to just have it in here all year round. Look at this interior. It is just a good place to spend some time. Everything is really nice, leather wrapped. It's not that hard plastic that you typically find on dashes in cars of this price range. And the whole center stack is actually really clean and minimalistic. It's almost reminiscent of a BMW 3 Series. The coolest feature of the third generation Mazda 3 is without a doubt its take on the heads-up display. Normally, heads-up displays are seen on cars double or triple the MSRP of this car, but Mazda came up with a really cool way of doing heads-up display for much cheaper than projecting it on the windshield. Mazda came up with this cool foldable screen here, and you see it retracts and pops up when you start the car. This is effectively just as good as a heads-up display that's projected on the windshield. It just has this way more cost-effective translucent pop-up screen that pops up and gives you the same kind of information. And when you turn the car off, down it goes. That's a really cool way of handling the heads-up display, and it's what makes the Mazda 3 the only car in its class to even offer such a thing. Now, there is one flaw with the heads-up display system that I don't think the Mazda engineers considered. Let's say you get into the car with your morning cup of coffee, and for some reason, you decide to set it on top of the gauge cluster. You turn the car on, and oh no, now there's coffee all over your Mazda 3 dash. Now, of course, this same situation could happen with car breakfast cereal, a shot glass, or a thimble full of tacks. Any number of things could be tipped over by this little screen. So it is something to keep an eye out for. Other contents include, well, there's nothing in the cup holder, which is surprising. Let's see what's in here. We've got some chapstick, I guess. And it looks like a dime that has been turquoised to death by something. Don't know what's going on there. Oh, a removable tray, a pink thing, and I guess a doll that's face down, some drawings, deodorant up top. You got some trinkets. Um, this is a really good way to fade out pictures of your family. If you've ever wanted your pictures to look like old Civil War photos, put one on your sun visor. You also have the sunroof. That's nice. It's a little hot for that today though. And let's hop around back. Ugh. Typical Propel 
and some light trash. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. Hopping around back, let's see how the let's see how the rear leg room is. Oh, it's pretty spacious back here. We've got a spare pair of shoes in case you wear out your current pair while driving. And we've got mm, I, some sort of snowflake uh, thing that's made out of tent material. If anybody knows what that is, let me know. An umbrella. And, oh, interesting. Storage pocket here. No storage pocket here. And no, oh no, cup holders back here. <laughs> I knew that. By the way, good time to point this out. Look at this red stitching. That is very fancy. And it matches the exterior of the car. Now, let's check out the trunk. Oh, first of all, ample trunk space, and it's extremely clean. I did tell the person whose car this was that I would be filming with it, but I told them not to clean it out, so I don't think they listened. Anyway, I guess we just got a pair of shorts. These are either women's shorts or really short guy shorts. Uh, what is hidden behind door number one? Ah, the jack. That's pretty cool. Because this car wasn't absolutely disgusting on the inside, I think we should take it around the block and give a brief driving impression. Okay, getting the Mazda 3 out on the road. This particular car has about 64,000 miles, so it's used, but I wouldn't call it high mileage. Broken in is how I would describe it. Throttle response is surprising. I would not guess that this car only has 184 horsepower. Off the line, it feels like it's got somewhere in the mid 200s, which I know still isn't a lot of horsepower, but for something in this segment and something of this size, it it feels quick, at least, you know, zero to 30, and that's really where it matters in the city. It's quiet, there's maybe a little bit of road noise from the tires, but again, nothing unheard of in the segment. Now, it's about 95 degrees out right now, and I am loving the car's automatic climate control. If you're new to the channel, I'm a huge fan of automatic climate control and any car that has it. So naturally, I'm a huge fan of this car. Said so handling is surprisingly good. It's got paddle shifters. Ooh, it's got a sport mode. Let's click it into sport mode. Now the dash says sport. Like most of the cars in this segment, all sport mode does is sharpen up the throttle response and cause it to hold gears a little bit longer, which actually does the job in a car like this. It does make it feel faster. So let's take it through some t more twisties. And man, I swear, most, it's the most surprising thing about this car is it's zero to 30. It feels like a monster. Steering is good. It's heavy. Not like a death in the family or anything like that, but in a good quality sort of way. And I mean, man, it is really holding itself through this turn. Kind of dodging through something else here. I'm impressed. This car is really hard to beat for the money, especially used. Uh, you can find a good one of these with around similar mileage for around 15 to 18,000 and I think that that is a stellar deal. One thing that does irk me about th this particular car and a, a few Mazdas is that this car has navigation built in. Like it's got the module, it's got all the controls, it's got the screen, but Mazda won't give it to you. Uh, you actually have to buy a, I think a $500 SD card from the dealership to activate the navigation. It just seems like a kind of nitpicky for something that they've already put the expensive parts in. The antenna, the screen, the controls. Uh, those are the parts that really make the expense on a navigation system, not the map. I know all I'm going to do is disappoint myself, but let's try these paddle shifters. And up shift. Okay. Well, it's no Ferrari, but you know, it's cool that it has them. Like anything else, if you're in that manual mode, all you have to do is hold the upshift paddle and it will unmanual mode itself. In case you're ever stuck in a manual mode in an automatic car, there you go. Overall, I mean, it's just that the materials are nice. The seat is comfortable. I would not mind taking a long drive in one of these cars. And bonus, this particular one isn't dirty. I mean, I think whoever owns this car took really good care of it. It's always nice to drive a car that's five years old that's not disgusting inside. So there you have it, guys. That's a quick look at a five-year-old Mazda 3 
as it normally would be, as a normal person would have owned it. Stuff inside and all. Luckily for me, this one wasn't totally disgusting and filled with trash and soda stains and who knows what else inside of it. After five years of use, this car holds up great, and I think you'd have a hard time convincing somebody that it was even five years old. At just fifteen dollars to $18,000, these cars are a ridiculously good value, and it certainly drives better than anything else in its class. Certainly better than a Subaru Impreza. Throw in all of those cool features like the heads-up display, automatic wipers, heated seats, keyless entry. This thing's awesome. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Let me know what you think. Should I do more of these other people's car videos? Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to check out some of my other videos. And as always, thank you for watching. Fans of the ND Miata will recognize its infotainment screen and selector button set up as it's the exact same. Also, we have the sunroof. The door just shut on my tripod.